Okay, so if you looked at my other two videos, one's about streaming from xCloud, and that's to stream direct from Microsoft, and one is to set up your Xbox so you can stream from your Xbox. Well, that was at your home, but this video is going to deal with how you can stream from your Xbox from anywhere in the world. So over the weekend, I did a test, and guess what? I streamed from 30 miles away, and what you'll see here is a demo of that. So let's say you're going on vacation, you grab your phone, uh, you travel whether it's 30 miles away or 300 miles away or 3,000 miles away, you leave your Xbox and its associated network at home. So what do you do when the day is done, all that vacationing and all that stuff, or the relatives uh, that you're visiting are getting a little boring? Well, what do you want to do? Grab your phone. Fire up your Xbox streaming app on your Android, and it connects to the local Wi-Fi network. And you should make sure that wherever you're going, it has a 5G network if you're going to do any game streaming because uh, that's what's required for this. And as of the day of this video, many hotels limit their bandwidth. They're only set up for business purposes, not for gaming. So they're on lower speed networks. So when you went through your initial setup for your app in the Xbox, it knows your Xbox, it knows where it's at, it knows its serial number, uh, it's ready to contact it. Just a quick side note here for the future. Uh, pretty soon you're going to see 5G networks everywhere where we're going to be able to contact it, not with a router, but directly through the 5G wireless carrier signal. And that means you're going to have the same kind of bandwidth. You could be sitting on a park bench and do this. The only thing you will have to worry about is your data plan. Uh, so it's coming, but it'll take a little bit to get here. Okay, you've done your, all your setup, all your connecting, and so you fire up your streaming app. I just put one up here on my uh, homepage on my Android. It launches the app. And uh, right now we're set up for xCloud, so I'm going to click on the top left uh, hamburger menu and say switch to console. Now it says pair controller here, but I've already did that earlier. So as long as you have your phone and your controller on, they should connect, allow you to go ahead and connect to your Xbox. So it's just a matter of pressing the box, app launches, and it starts uh, talking to your network, connecting up, uh, making sure you're, it can find your Xbox. Now, depending upon a lot of things, you know, whether your connection we talked about earlier, uh, about your network where you're at, uh, how busy it is with other people, streaming setup could take quite a while. Streaming your games could be uh, problematic depending upon all that. But here's what you're going to see. And that's your Xbox homepage, just like you were sitting right in front of your console. And from here, you'll be able to play any game that's installed on your console, not just the ones offered through xCloud from Microsoft. So those screens were just for demonstration purposes. This is a little bit of a hazy look, but the screens on your Android will be nice and clear. Uh, so it's going to fire up just like this. And depending upon your network, it'll take 5 or 10 seconds to fire it up. So here we are back again at the home page, and I'm going to play some Halo. And unlike my earlier video where I played Halo 4, I'm going to uh, choose Halo, an earlier version. Now, it will create less demand on the game. With a high resolution or a newer game that has more demands on the system will tax it, which may run fine at home, but add streaming to that, it may cause a problem. Uh, but you have to just use your own judgment on what works for you and what doesn't. So I'm going to be quiet here for a few seconds so we can just listen in. Cortana, all I need to know is did we lose it? I think we both know the answer to that. Ship shows green. Cycle complete. Sorry for the quick thaw, Master Chief. Things are a little hectic right now. But this orientation should pass quickly. Welcome back, sir. We'll have your battle ready stat. Chief, please look around the room. I need to get a calibration reading for your battle suit's diagnostics. Good. Thank you, sir. I'm bringing your health monitors online, sir. Vital signs look normal. No freezer hurt. Okay, sir. Go ahead and climb out of the cryo tube. And for all of us, gamers who are perfectionists, uh, you want to talk about frame rate and blurring and things like that. Uh, this is not like playing on your PC. Uh, it's not going to be as good a quality, uh, but it's perfectly acceptable for remote gaming. Okay, bring us energy shields online, please. 
Bridge to Cryo 2, this is Captain Key. Send the Master Chief to the bridge immediately. Captain, we'll have to skip the weapons diagnostics and I... On double, Truman. Aye, aye, sir. So let's talk a little bit about requirements. I covered this in my other two videos, and you should go back and look at how to set up your Xbox and make sure you have the right controller. Uh, but currently, you need to be in the Insiders program. Eventually, all Xboxes will have the capability. Uh, one thing I did find out that hardwired is preferred. I have a hardwired connection at home. Uh, my Xbox is not hooked up wirelessly to our network. So it makes a big difference when streaming. Now, the reason for that is not just because there's a difference between wired and wireless, which is getting smaller and smaller, but don't forget, when you're on wireless, you have to contend with other people on your network. You also have to contend with other wireless networks in the area interfering on the channel you're on. So wired is the safest route. Now, to test, you can test it from your Xbox app on your PC. There's a test streaming here, and if you click on it, you start the test. It'll test to see if how bad, good your streaming is, whether you pass all different levels. Now this test tested between my PC upstairs and my Xbox downstairs to see if it passed the streaming and for what quality. Before I hooked up wired, uh, I did wirelessly, it only had lower mid range that passed the test. So connecting up with a physical wire rather than wireless it's not really necessarily about speeds because the new 5G is fast, but you're not going to have interference from other networks and that. Your Xbox is going to be talking directly to it. There you are. You see that I have passed all four levels here. So the next thing we need to talk about is your phone and its connection. Now, if you look at the bottom of the list, it talks about a 5G Wi-Fi or mobile data connection. And that's going to be more and more common uh, in the future. And also Android 6.0 may be compatible, but your phone's hardware should be faster. And again, as years go by, faster phones comes out, uh, you should be okay. Now, the next item is your controller. And in my test, the Xbox wireless controller needs to be used. It also needed a firmware update. You can, again, check the earlier videos on how to get that done. But I did have some feedback with some guys that had uh, PS3 controllers that worked. So there you have the basic requirements for that. And I'll have a link again at the end of the video to all the other two videos uh, that show you how to set all that up. So here we are at the first step in uh, gaming's future, uh, running it from your console. Eventually, it's going to go to the cloud type where developers don't have to develop for consoles. They just have to have it run on the servers and they're streamed directly to you from there. But for now, the transition is you can fire up your Xbox remotely, log into it, and start playing your games on your Android device. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video. And if you want to get more, just subscribe to Old Guy Geek. You can also follow me at Facebook or Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video.